I don't get to talk about it very much doing board game, tabletop gaming media, but one of the things that I love is horror movies and particularly old horror movies. I am a huge fan of Creature from the Black Lagoon, Dracula, Frankenstein, The Wolfman, not The Mummy, The Mummy sucked, but... I love these guys, Vincent Price, Boris Karloff, Bela Lugosi, Lon Chaney. These guys are fantastic, and these old movies are amazing. So when I was at Gen Con this year, and I bumped into this game with this amazingly beautiful artwork, I had to have it. I just had to have it. I threw my money down, took it home with me, and I decided that I need to do a review of this game based on my love of this style of movie. So I'm doing my review today of Campy Creatures. In Campy Creatures, players use their monsters to go out and snatch mortals that are worth positive and negative points. You obviously would prefer to have the ones that are worth positive points. Each player has the same hand of creature cards, and each creature has a strength ranging from 0 to 8. A number of mortal cards are dealt to the table, and all the players simultaneously select one of the cards from their hand and play it face down. When everybody's ready, all the cards are revealed. The creature with the highest strength gets to snatch their mortal card first, and so on down the line. But each creature has an ability. Before snatching any mortals, many of these abilities will trigger goofing up everything. The vampire negates the creature ability to his left. The wolfman makes a player to your right discard a creature card. The invisible man allows you to discard one of the mortals you've captured, likely a negative point scoring mortal. And the invader lets you snatch two mortals, leaving somebody unable to take anyone. Whenever there's a tie, you have to go to the clash meter The player with the token higher on the meter gets to break the tie. At the end of the round, the Clash player who won the tie moves to the bottom, changing the order for the next Clash. After all the mortals have been captured, you score up and start over. After three rounds, the player with the most points is the greatest group of creatures that want to snatch and apparently eat mortals in the entire monster universe. Campy Creatures is essentially a very simplistic game. It's a, it's a filler game, it's a party game. Uh, and normally I wouldn't do a video review of a game that is basically a rehash of a lot of other games that have come before it. I mean, there is many games like this. I, one of them I can think of immediately is Eggs and Empires, which, you know, everybody has the same hand of cards. You play the cards, you reveal the cards, and whoever played the highest gets to take the point cards first. Uh, this is not new. The reason I wanted to do a review of this is because by far, this is my favorite of all of them that I've that I've played so far. And the reason is not just because I love old horror movies, but because the mechanics are just so solid and seamlessly integrate with each other. There's a lot of cool strategic synergies that happen with these cards and some foresight that you that you can do in this game to to really play a neat game. Uh, and I'll just start off, of course, by saying that the, 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 the components and the aesthetic of this game is absolutely gorgeous. The cards are beautiful. The artwork in this thing is beyond. Uh, if I had a poster-sized version of each one of these cards, I would proudly hang all of them on my wall because they are just that good. Uh, and I love them. I just love everything down to the, the, the creeples. They call them creeples in the rule book, and I got a kick out of that when I read. I thought that was funny. The, the price is right, and the, the production is stellar here. But talking about gameplay, what I like about this game and what makes this game great, like I mentioned before, is all of those monster powers. They just work together so well. You know, some of them thematically good, some of them not so good. I mean, Kaiju obviously is the biggest monster, most powerful one, has no other ability other than he's going to take a card first. He's just going to do it. Unless someone plays the mummy. I don't know why the mummy can, can trump the, the, the kaiju, but that adds some really cool strategy there and foresight. Um, the, the beast is King Kong. And if you keep him in your hand and don't use him by the end of the round, you score three points. So you want to strategically use him when you think you're going to get more points than you would score holding on to him. And that thematically is cool because you're going to unleash the beast. He's chained up somewhere. You don't want to let him go. But when you let him go, he's going to wreck the town. I like that. It thematically is cool. Uh, you look at some of the other ones, you know, like the vampire who takes some, stops somebody's power from happening and the werewolf lets you force somebody to discard a card. Not super thematic there, but cool nonetheless. 
uh, the blob gets bigger and bigger as you play because you know you discard a card. He takes on their power. Kind of a neat concept here. The only one that I have a beef with is the creature from the Black Lagoon because I love the creature from the Black Lagoon. It's my favorite one of all of these monsters, which is weird because everyone looks at me cross-eyed when I say that, but he's my favorite one. In this one, he makes you give away one of your cards or the card you take, he makes you give it away. And I like that. You know, reason I don't like that is because look at this guy. That guy is not going to, when he scores points on that damsel, he ain't giving it away. That's for sure. You know, I'm just joking around about that one, but it's a cool power though. It, it really lends to the strategy. And when I'm talking strategy, strategies aren't mind blowing here. I mean, there are actually some pretty obvious strategies like the mummy versus the kaiju and you know, the uh, playing the, the gill man so that you can give away the cards you take if they're all bad. Um, there's some obvious strategies there. What makes this game cool is when you start to get good at it and you start to, okay, we all know the strategies now. That's when the game gets cool because you have to start thinking outside of that box. Like how are you gonna use that knowledge and the fact that other people might have that knowledge and use it against them. I mean, there's always, there's this psychology thing of like, well, I know that he knows and he knows that I know, so I'm gonna do this, but he probably knows I'm gonna do that. That's gonna happen, of course. But there's some interesting ways that you can kind of engineer what happens in this game. And I really, really like that. The monster cards are just very, very well done here. Now, the, 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 the second thing that I love about this game is that there's three different scoring methods here. You obviously have your regular old mortals, positive and negative points. Cool, neat artwork on those cards too. That's your normal thing. But then they got teenagers because every monster loves to capture and eat teenagers. So teenagers don't, aren't worth anything, right? Until you collect a lot of them, right? So you're trying to get the majority of the teenagers or second place and you'll get points that way. So it's a different option. You know, you can go that strategy as opposed to just collecting big point score cards. Neat. Then you have engineers. Engineers, if you if you collect even ones, you get points. If you collect odd numbers of them, you get negative points. So it's a really neat way to not only plan to score that way, but to screw other people who have them. You can try to make them take the engineers to get an odd number to get those negative points. Neat concept. I like that a lot. And of course, the tiebreaker, the clash meter is such a great addition to this game because there's a visual representation that you can use within your strategy to plan for your plays. You see that you can take the first card, so you're okay if you play uh, the same number as somebody else, or you see that somebody else has it, so you wanna think about that ahead of time and try to plan for your play. Neat, neat game. Replayability. See, the reason this game has high replayability isn't because of the strategies, the depth of the game, but because of the, the, the fun it is to play, the coolness of the theme and the fact that it plays quickly. So, you know, you're obviously not going to tent pull an evening with campy creatures, but this is a game that you can bring along to every game night. I'm going to play terraforming Mars tonight, but I'm also going to play campy creatures because it's in my bag. And we're always going to have like an extra 10 minutes to play a game, you know, or you're playing something you, Twilight Imperium. Oh, Joe isn't showing up yet. Let's play some campy creatures. This one will always be in my bag because I love it, not just because of the theme, but because it's a fun game and there is some strategy involved. So I, I highly recommend Campy Creatures. I, I was so pleasantly surprised and happy when I brought this home solely because I like weird monsters and found out that it was a really great game besides. So I hope you check this one out, Campy Creatures. Thank you so much for watching my review of Campy Creatures. Hope you enjoyed it and if you did, please consider subscribing to the YouTube channel below. Also, if you like tabletop games, you wanna hear more about board games, card games, miniatures games, and role-playing games, check out our audio podcast. You can find it at thesecretcabal.com or on iTunes. And until next time, have a good one.